Before we delve into the manufacturing process of bricks, let's explore some fascinating facts about them. Bricks have been used for thousands of years. So far, the oldest bricks were found in Tel Aswad, Syria. They had been made from mud in 7,500 BC. The largest ancient brick infrastructure is the Jeta Vanaramaya Stupa in Sri Lanka. It is 400 feet tall, making it the third tallest after two Greek pyramids. According to Business Wire, over 1.9 trillion bricks were produced in 2020. China is the largest brick manufacturer, producing 66.67% of global production. These bricks are baked in kilns, and India has more than 100,000 kilns, which makes India the second largest brick producer. Pakistan ranks third in brick manufacturing, with 20,000 kilns operating throughout the country. Africa is also a significant player in the brick manufacturing industry. South Africa alone produces more than 3.6 billion bricks a year. There are different types of bricks. They can be classified based on the materials used in their production. For example, there are concrete bricks, there are lime bricks, and there are fly ash bricks. Bricks can also be categorized on the basis of their design. The most simple type of brick that you often see is solid brick, while bricks with a rod-like hole in their center are known as engineering bricks. There are also air bricks and hollow bricks. Each brick design has a unique application in the construction. For instance, you can build walls with solid bricks, but engineering bricks are preferred for foundational layers. They are particularly effective in areas below the damp proof course to prevent moisture ingress. Hollow bricks are lightweight and offer thermal and sound insulation. Air bricks or vent bricks have small openings, which allow air to flow through, promoting airflow and reducing moisture buildup. You can use them to build cavity walls. Among all the types of bricks, the solid clay brick is the most common type of brick that is largely manufactured, especially in developing countries. It is still made the same way as they were made centuries ago. Let's explore the making of traditional solid bricks first. After that, we will cover the manufacturing of bricks in the modern factories. But before that, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. First of all, the raw material is required to make bricks. You can mine soil from your nearby areas if it has the potential to produce silty clay loam. Alluvial soils extracted from the river's valleys are also preferred. The mined soil is first crushed and alien elements are removed from it. This eases for workers who prepare clay by hand. The easiest way to make clay is to fill a pit with water and unload the refined soil in it. Here, they are mixing the soil and water using a tractor and its backhoe attachment. However, all this was done by hand tools in the past. In many developing countries, clay is still prepared by a crew of workers. Once the clay gets ready, you can knead it like flour and pour it into the brick mold. The mold gives it the shape of a brick. Some brick makers have access to innovative equipment for preparing these traditional molded bricks. The BMM 300 is a brick forming machine. This machine can form 12,000 bricks out of clay in just one hour. It operates continuously at a predefined speed, dropping bricks at intervals that optimize production without compromising quality. But the formed bricks are still wet and can't be moved to the kiln yet. Therefore, they leave the bricks to dry first. This natural drying process takes about two weeks. Of course, environmental conditions play a significant role during the drying phase. These bricks are completely dried, but they lack strength, durability, and resistance to weathering. However, the dried mud bricks are still used in some remote areas of Pakistan and India. Often, organic materials like straw or rice husks as binder are added for mud bricks. On the other hand, the traditional bricks are treated with fire in a kiln. 
firing bricks to about 640 degrees Celsius results in physical changes, while temperatures between 700 degrees Celsius and 1000 degrees Celsius induce chemical changes where alumina and silica in the clay fuse together. On average, it requires between 110 and 700 grams of coal per brick, depending on various factors, including kiln design and operational practices. The traditional kilns may vary in design, but typically include a chamber and a chimney. The bricks are stacked within the kiln and then fired using coal. On average, it requires between 110 and 700 grams of coal per brick, depending on various factors, including kiln design and operational practices. Once fire is lit in a kiln, it remains constantly baking bricks for four to six months. But then, how do they transfer ready bricks out of the kiln and place a new batch of bricks into it? This is the Bull Trench Kiln, which has been a popular choice for making molded bricks in South Asia. The Bull Trench Kiln has a chimney on its top and an oval-shaped trench under the temporary roof made of ash. It can be divided into three zones, the preheating zone, the combustion zone, and the cooling zone. Bricks are placed in the preheated zone and combustion zone, but combustion only takes place in the combustion zone. The even space in between them allows the air to pass through. The air travels from outside to the cooling zone, enters the combustion zone, and brings heat to the preheated zone while moving through it. The air then exits via the ducts, travels through the chimney, and ultimately reaches the atmosphere. In this way, the bricks of the cooling zone get cooled down, while preheated bricks get partially baked, and the combustion bricks get completely baked. Workers don't have to replace the completely baked bricks with a new pile of bricks. This makes a continuous process. The cooled bricks can be collected from the cooling zone, whereas more mud bricks can be placed on the other side. These traditional chimneys work like a natural pump for air travel, but without electricity. These chimneys in India and Pakistan are the primary source of smog. Every winter, fog surrounds parts of both countries. When the smoke coming out of chimneys mixes up with fog, it creates new air pollutants. It causes lung diseases, irritates eyes, and reduces visibility. This year, Pakistan's High Court ordered the demolition of 209 kilns, which were not equipped with zigzag technology. But what is zigzag technology, and how can it reduce carbon emissions? The zigzag technology installed in kilns uses electricity to boost productivity and improve the combustion process. An induced fan with a 15 to 20 horsepower motor is installed above, and the stack of bricks is arranged in a way that air travels through between them in a zigzag manner. The main pipe facilitates proper fuel combustion by drawing hot air from the pipes and directing it into the main chimney. The hot air travels from the pipe holes to the chambers, which are connected above with an adjustable duct to the main chimney pipe. Coal is first crushed, then continuously fed to the kiln. The air produced by fans helps coal burn easily. Compared to a simple bull trench kiln, it reduces carbon dioxide emissions by 5 to 8 tons annually. Moreover, it not just boosts production, but also gives more homogeneous heat treatment to all bricks. In the developed countries, bricks are produced in a different way. Companies rely on heavy-duty machines and robots to produce extruded bricks. Let's have a look. Just like the traditional method, the soil is excavated for making clay, but the work is done by machines. Here, a bucket excavator collects the river Rhine soil while simultaneously creating a side slope. The excavated soil can be transferred to a different transport system suited to the local conditions. As usual, the soil is first crushed using a large crusher. Once the soil turns into a fine powder, it is then filtered to remove any alien elements from it. The crushed and refined soil then goes into a large mixer. Upon rotation, the soil and water blend together, resulting in clay. 
Of course, a specific quantity of clay is made, which can fulfill the continuous production in the meantime. Large brick companies also carry out quality tests to ensure they meet the required standards. The clay is ready now. It can be poured into a mold to produce solid bricks. For making engineering bricks, the clay is compressed and extruded to create long slab. The extrusion machine consists of a barrel with a screw mechanism. As the screw turns, it pushes the clay through a die, shaping it into the desired form. Any extra material gets shaved off when the extruded mud slab moves on the conveyors. Before the slabs start getting dry and hard, it is cut using a multiple wire cutter. This process converts the slab into numerous uniform bricks of standard size. The conveyors take those formed bricks to the drying area. There, they lose moisture. The well-dried bricks made by the extrusion process are then placed in a kiln. The kiln looks like a large dome from inside, and it's called the dome kiln for that reason. Firewood is used as fuel to ignite kilns. For 20 to 40 hours, depending on the clay type, the bricks remain in the firing kiln. The exposure to extreme heat with temperatures up to 900 centigrade transforms them into robust bricks. With a 3D printing machine, you can build the walls of an entire home in just 16 days, whereas the old masonry method takes at least six months to build an equally large home. In manufacturing a single brick, the whole process emits approximately 0.17 to 0.38 gram of CO2. If we multiply these figures by the total number of bricks, which is 1.9 trillion, the result is 722,000 metric tons of carbon emissions. This is why major players in the brick industry, such as Wienerberger, have taken the initiative to produce bricks with zero emissions. In this factory at the Cordemark site in Belgium, they produce brick slips. Brick slips are used as tiles to give walls the appearance, color, and texture of a real clay brick wall. Classic baksteen strippen worden verzaagd van baksteen. In men verzaagt die baksteen in drie stukken en het middelste gedeelte goed maar weg. De twee buitenste stukken van 2 cm ongeveer zijn dan de strippen. In dit systeem maken wij eigenlijk, we persen onmiddellijk de baksteenstrip. Wat vermijdt dat wij zaagenergie nodig hebben, dat wij afval creëren dat middelste stuk en dat wij die basisstenen niet hoeven te transporteren. This brick manufacturing factory has an electric kiln that is fired with green energy. Het is elektrisch gestookt en die wordt gestookt met groene energie, waarvan wel twee zelf 25% opwekken via onze zonnepanelen. Also, the drying plant takes and uses residual heat from the brick oven. After heat treatment, the bricks are ready to be sent to the packaging station. At the packaging station, these robots create a stack of bricks, wrap them with a plastic sheet, and tie them together. A gantry crane lifts the packaged pallet and then places it on a transport system. With advancement in technology, 3D printing emerged as a new way to construct homes. So far, 3D printing has not taken off. But once it does, bricks will be obsolete in construction. 3D printing technology has the potential to build homes at a significantly faster pace than traditional methods. Let's look at the typical construction of a home wall. It involves laying brick after brick, waiting for the mortar between them to dry and foster. With a 3D printing machine, you can build the walls of an entire home in just 16 days whereas the old masonry method takes at least six months to build an equally large home. It requires a large crew to do that, but 3D printing requires only three people, one for operating the 3D machine, another for concrete mixing, and the third for site monitoring. It also reduces the cost. 3D printing also reduces a significant amount of construction waste as each layer is laid precisely according to the requirement. But 3D printing has its own challenge to deal with. 
One of them is the environmental conditions of the construction site. The humidity affects the construction material that is used in 3D printing. Therefore, some additives are added, which are expensive. Also, there are not many experts who can effectively read the humidity and other environmental conditions and mix those expensive additives accordingly. But making the process of brick CO too free requires a large amount of investment and resources. Therefore, finding some alternatives is a smart idea. Look at this house. They call it the harmless home because its walls are not built of any ordinary bricks. These walls are built of Lego blocks, which are made from a plant known as hemp. This plant offers many natural advantages, but it is one of the best alternatives to typical clay bricks and concrete blocks. One hectare of hemp crops consumes 10 tons of CO2 a year. Additionally, hemp requires minimal water, negating the need for artificial irrigation and grows at a rate approximately 50 times faster than that of a tree. The preparation of hemp blocks is very interesting, and so is its Lego-like structure. Typical hemp blocks are made by using the woody part of hemp. It can be obtained by harvesting the hemp plant and drying it for a few days. Next, 65% of natural cement, 25% of water, 10% of hydraulic lime, and 10% of metaphor are added. You can use a concrete mixer and the mixing process takes some time. Once the mixture gets ready, it is poured into blocks and waited for it to dry up. Many of you might be watching the use of hemp as a construction material for the first time. Mortar made of hemp was discovered on the pillars of bridges built by the Merovingians in the 6th century. However, this home is the first one that was built with the new hemp blocks, made by the Canadian company Just Biofiber. These blocks are highly fire resistant. A test revealed that you can throw fire on these blocks for two hours. It will not burn them out. Lime stucco was also used in the making of these bricks, making them pest resistant and eco-friendly. Each block weighs around 30 pounds, or 13.6 kilograms. The process of constructing walls from them bears a striking resemblance to the construction of Lego walls. They have an interlocking system, which perfectly connects one block with another. Lime motor is applied between them to glue them together as a firm structure. For wall corners, the additional parts can be trimmed off. Biofiber has recently developed a new epoxy-like material specifically for its blocks, resulting in this green internal structure. It enhances the block's vertical load-bearing capacity. Each block also has contours for the installation of electric pipes. Lastly, advanced composite materials are pumped into them to create a vapor barrier. We use 350 tons of pressure when we make each frame. And by doing that, we create a thermal set. You can't use these blocks for underground construction as they contain a hemp lime mixture that decomposes in the soil. Moreover, a typical concrete wall can last around 65 years, but these blocks have a life of 100 years. From manufacturing of bricks to 3D printed homes and these eco-friendly blocks, you have seen a lot of interesting stuff today. Hope you like this video. We appreciate it if you guys like and subscribe. See you next time.